In our final video regarding potential energy, we're going to try and combine our knowledge of activation energy, delta H, potential energy itself, the activated complex, and connect it all back to how kinetic and potential energy influence each other. So if we look at this particular reaction in the forward direction, we can see that the potential energy of our products is greater than the potential energy of our reactants here, meaning that in the forward direction, we are dealing with an endothermic reaction because we can see that delta H is clearly a positive number. Now, if we look at this reaction going backward, if the products of the forward reaction become the reactants and we go backward, now suddenly our reactants have a greater potential energy than our products do, meaning that delta H has become negative, so the reverse reaction is going to be exothermic, which again is nothing we haven't seen before. Now that we have a definition for activation energy, the difference in potential energy between the activated complex and the reactants in the chemical reaction, we can make a few definitions as far as the relationship between Ea and delta H in both directions. If we look at the forward activation energy here, we see that the forward activation energy is equal to the sum of the activation energy of the reverse reaction, which we see here, added to delta H, which we see here. Now, conversely, if we were looking at the reverse reaction, if we take the Ea of the reverse reaction here, we can get that Ea by taking the activation energy of the forward reaction and instead subtracting delta H from that instead, as we can clearly see on this graph. So that's the connection between the forward and reverse directions of activation energy and delta H. Now it's time to put everything together and compare all of that to kinetic energy. Now, as we know from the law of conservation of energy, we cannot create or destroy energy, which means that this increase in potential energy cannot just magically be made out of nowhere. The energy input needs to come from a different source of energy. Now, we can observe this in the form of adding heat to a magnesium ribbon in order to start its reaction with oxygen. That means that the energy input that is required in order to increase the potential energy from our reactants to make the activated complex needs to come from kinetic energy. Which brings us back to looking at our kinetic energy distributions. We remember that the key point on a kinetic energy distribution is called E min. And E min is the minimum amount of kinetic energy that is needed in order for a reaction to take place. Now, this definition sounds very similar to Ea, which is the minimum amount of potential energy we need to add in order to form the activated complex. These definitions sound similar because they are actually the same. The kinetic energy from E min is the kinetic energy that we need to add to the reactants in order to form the activated complex. And for that reason, activation energy and E min are the same number. E min is just referring to that energy that exists in its kinetic energy form. And when that gets converted into Ea, it is referring to the potential energy that's needed in order to make the new bonds in the activated complex. Finally, we can talk about the relationship between the amount of kinetic energy added and whether what will happen in that reaction if the kinetic energy is greater than, equal to, or less than the activation energy. So firstly, if we consider that we're adding an amount of kinetic energy that is equal to Ea, let's just draw out the activation energy in this graph here, let's say that the amount of kinetic energy that we're going to add is equal to Ea. Is it possible for the kinetic for the chemical reaction to occur at this point? Well, assuming 
that the energy is transferred with 100% efficiency. This is exactly enough kinetic energy that is needed in order to be converted into potential energy to make the activated complex. So in this case, our reaction is possible. Well, what if we were to add more kinetic energy than the potential energy required for the activation energy? Well, on the graph, this would look like this. Let's say that we added this amount of kinetic energy. Well, if we add more kinetic energy than is needed to form the activated complex, the reaction is definitely possible. In fact, it's even more realistic that this amount of kinetic energy would cause a chemical reaction because as we know, energy transfers are never 100% efficient. So this, in this case, it's actually more likely that we will get a successful reaction. However, what if the kinetic energy added to the reaction is less than the amount required to get to the activated complex. So maybe if we add this amount of kinetic energy, is this amount of kinetic energy enough to form the activated complex? Well, definitely not. So if we do not add enough kinetic energy to get to EA, we are not going to have any visible reaction here because reaction, there we go, we are not going to have any visible reaction because this amount of kinetic energy is not enough to make the new bonds that are required to form the activated complex. With that, we have now explored all of the possible connections between kinetic and potential energy as well as activation energy and delta H. The next series of videos will look at calculations involved with calculating the actual delta H mathematically within chemical reactions.